Um, good morning. I'm here with Jason Njoku of Iroku TV. Uh, Iroku TV is, um, should I, I w let me liken it to the, our future Netflix or Amazon TV or not Apple TV. But Jason, good morning. And good morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having um, me. Iroku TV, um, you know, when I put on my Apple TV, how come I don't see, I mean, I'm beginning to see lots of different channels, HBO, when are we going to see Iroku TV on something like an Apple TV um, medium? So, uh, probably never, actually. Um, our focus is on the base, the masses. Um, we are uh, download only, primarily. Um, we're Android first. Um, so the primary means now of accessing uh, Iwoko TV here in Nigeria is via our, our Android app. Uh, more importantly, we're essentially in a very simple context, uh, taking African magic and putting it on, on a mobile phone at a really sort of, sort of affordable price and making it available for as many people as possible. Um, and that, that in itself is like a, a Herculean task um, that we have been really cranking at trying to figure out over the last few years and we're still kind of work in progress on that. Okay, so, uh, so let's get some basics. How old is Iroku TV? What's your subscri subscriber base? And how successful? Um, so, and what's your, what's your target? We launched on the 1st of December 2011, so next week, Tuesday, makes us a four year old platform. Um, our subscriber base is overwhelmingly in the West, so um, it's a global platform. Largest markets being North America and Western Europe. Um, Nigeria is our largest market in, in, in Africa. We have tens of thousands of subscribers here. Um, but because of the nature of the subscription base, people typically don't have recurring billing, so that they basically churn in and churn out. Um, our ambition is to be um, what we consider to be a tier one uh, um, subscription service in Africa. That's a one million subscribers. So our, our ambition is to get to one million subscribers. It took uh, DSTV nine years to get there. Um, it took Netflix seven years to get there. It got, took GoTV, I think it was about three and a half years to get there. We hope to get there within 10 years. So we're four years in, it's probably take us another six years or so to get there. It's interesting, um, especially I'm a banker, so and um, things that interest me, the subscriber base, um, <laughs> the billing, and so like there lies opportunity, but I think the bigger, I mean, the bigger opportunity is also for that industry. So with all this subscriber base, people willing to um, um, download, um, how come you haven't, so how come it's, they say it's difficult to get financing and um, how are you going to solve that payment because to to um, to ensure the stickiness you need to um, put a, a sustainable payment platform onto that um. yeah so and I think firstly um, you kind of have to go with what the consumers are currently using at the moment today it's a cash economy um, whether it's Star Times, DSTV, GoTV uh, 70 80 percent of the subscription is still via cash so i'm walking into one of their point of sales and paying for something over the counter that, that is basically how things are today with that said obviously you know there's lots of excitement around um the different banking apps obviously diamond bank just uh just have like has, has a beautiful app um there's other kind of like mobile money services you know people can now sort of do transfers from bank but it's essentially what people want to do right uh, and you know we, we spoke earlier off camera about the challenges of e-commerce or just internet things in Nigeria, it's difficult because, you know, people still want to pay when they see something, when they get something. So, um, you know, our perspective is that we need sustainability in terms of the actual payment platforms. The biggest payment platforms or payment wallets are the, the MNOs, also the MTNs and the, uh, and the Tissalats and the, and the Airtels, etc. The challenge is they, they want to create their own version of Iwoko TV, so they basically want to put us out of business. Um, and if they don't want to put us out of business, they want to collect their, 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 their tax for using their platform, which anywhere from sort of 60, 70, 80% um, of your revenues. Uh, so it's, that's the challenge. No one, that's the challenge that no one has solved. And I know like Congo have just basically built their own payment platform, they're still building that out. You know, it's, we talk to everybody, but we don't really see any solutions until there is like education and bringing people from the current reality, which is very cash based, to more of a kind of a cashless, more frictionless payment uh, uh, reality. I don't think you've been talking to the right bankers. But anyway, um, so I, I'm concerned about the, just like my own industry, I'm concerned about the sustainability of my business uh, because my competition is not just local, it's global as well. Because payment is, um, I mean, there are many payment substitutes and in your business there are many entertainment substitutes and you can access your content um, from different sources 
And so how do you, so what are your driver, value driver? What, uh, what do you see your value driver into the future that will, that will ensure that Iroko TV is still growing its customer base five years from today and it still has a, a sustainable business model? Well, firstly, it's content. People don't care about Iroko TV, they, they care about the content. So our mission is really simple. We lead people to content they love. Um, in order to do that, you need to essentially wrap the content in a, uh, in a digestible, in a, in a sort of an education, like non-intensive kind of manner and make them access it. You know, I think today um, to, to really get the best out of local TV, you need about a gigabyte of data. A gigabyte of data in Nigeria is anywhere between two and two and a half thousand naira. That's a lot of money for a lot of people. The vast majority of people, studies that we've done ourselves and studies which have been uh, done in the market, indicate that people are only buying about two or 300 megabits a month. So how do you take the person who is buying two or 300 megabits a month, now take them to the point where they need to buy a gigabyte? That's an education. That is, um, that is building a new use case. So no one has built that use case as to why someone should go from like social media to, uh, to like internet TV. You know, a lot of people have tried to do it, um, but it hasn't really been that successful as yet. And, and our, our version of reality is that if we have the best content, if we can kind of support that education in app, because we can't afford to put billboards up or do television adverts um, and stuff, um, we just build like the best user experience and then create tools which enable people to, to, to access content that much more affordable, um, then, then that's the only way we basically even be in the game. And for us, it's not about thriving, it's about surviving. So isn't that, I mean, so, so what about collaboration? Because there's no way I see people who are going to buy 2,000 naira worth of um, data yep. just to watch Iroko TV when the other, I mean, when the other things, of course, now you have data um, that, is, that is competing for different things. Sure. There's, of course, entertainment, there's work, there's, there's education. So um, collaboration comes to mind. They're collaborating with the telcos, collaborating with, with even the device owners to come up with a value proposition. Um, and that's something that, um, is that something that you're thinking of? So it's something we've been, we've been desperately trying to do for the last um, four years. I think the challenge is with any kind of uh, corporate collaboration, once when, when you put a corporate angle, that it starts to kind of mutate into really peculiar things where the bigger partner basically gets his own way. But of course. <laughs> but but <laughs> again, again, so it's, you can't tell me that my life's work, I must yield to you. Like if I'm gonna lie down, at least at least seduce me, at least make it feel, at least make it feel like I'm like I'm wanted. Don't just tell me I must lie down. Let that remember say, <laughs> do you want to be a big fish in a in a small pond or a small fish in a, in a, in a big ocean? But you know what? Yeah. I think the key thing is that this is a market that we understand. This is a market we are pioneering in. And you know what? We believe it's like a ten. We, we, it's like a decade long um, um, journey. So there is no one person who's going to make or break Iroko today. So if someone comes with a bad deal, I'm not going to lie down. I'd rather just wait it out. Because at some point, I will get, little, I'll get big or small. Maybe the person that's on the seat will change. And there's a new breath of fresh air and then maybe things can happen. So for us, it's not about having a partnership. It's about having the right partnership. And I think young companies, especially in Nigeria, should not feel bullied into to doing stupid deals because I've seen so many stupid deals. I think that's, that's a conversation for, for, for an offline. Well, last question. Um, I look at TV, well, um, uh, movies and music. And music has come a very long way in terms of the quality of Nigerian music. Um, I remember before when Nigerians were trying um, to copy Western um, um, artists and they were doing a bad job of it. Terrible until job. They, until terrible, terrible, terrible job. And now, so, so we're, we're now internationalizing Nigerian music and it's, of course, bringing a lot of fame and fortune for, for our artists. But on the movie side, um, I still think we have a long way to go uh, in terms of the quality of the content. And so, um, are, we, are we going to see uh, a time when Iroko TV is, um, becomes like a Netflix, where you start actually producing content um, specifically, specifically for Iroko TV to um, differentiate yourself from, from everybody else? So on the first point, I would argue the complete opposite. Really? I would say with a, without a shadow of a doubt that in terms of like actual industry output and industry size, Nollywood dominates music. Yes. It's not, again, it's, it's not about there being one artist who's like a millionaire. That, that's easy. But it's like, can you raise and hold industry? Are there structures? Are there people in place to kind of like build whole industries? That doesn't exist in music. It doesn't really exist. It's like one guy and a voice. It's like comedy. As long as Basketmouth walked in and start talking, he'll make money. 
same kind of whiskey. But if you're like an art, if you're like a, 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 a if it's a movie, you need other people. If it's a TV series, you need other people. So essentially, you build actual capacity. Um, again, if you do, if you look if you look at the cold hard facts, um, African Magic channels are more popular than any of the music channels on any of the networks in Africa. So again, if you look at if you look at um, DSTV, if you look at GoTV, if you look at Star Times, if you look at uh, Canal or any of the French speaking Africa ones. Um, if you look at the top five channels, there is a Nollywood channel in there. You know, I agree, but I mean, I, I, th I think I would call it so like, let me ask a question. How many, how many Nigerian movies like, are, are, are great? I mean, there's volume, it's a volume business. It's like um, but great Bollywood. To who, Uzoma, Uzoma, I, Uzoma, great yeah, to who? So, yeah. and, 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 and this is the thing, it's, 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 if you can get somebody, if you can get the vast majority of people in Nigeria to sit down and watch something, it's good. Yeah, see, this, is, this is where I look at it. Once you have, once you start having good quality where you can, I see a Nigerian movie in Cannes um, Festival. But who cares if it's Cannes? Yeah. I, I tell about, you what, because, about, because, because you want investment coming into Nigeria to actually grow this industry. Uzoma, my yeah. ambition is for any, none, of my, none of my movies will ever go to Cannes, to the Oscars. Say, so, you know, I do not care. You know, I think I can be successful because there's a billion people in Sub-Saharan Africa and they love our content. They need our content. We're talking to them in a voice which they truly understand. We don't need some sort of like validation from someone in the West. I think if we need that, then there's something fundamentally wrong with us. Where's our confidence? So I, I actually reject that in Jesus' name that we don't we need that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we we'll end with an amen to that. Thank you very much, Jake. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <laughs>